They're two of the biggest personalities in Australian politics, also two of the most controversial and polarising. And now they're a couple, Pauline Hanson and Mark Latham, Mr and Mrs One Nation. By becoming Pauline's proxy in New South Wales, Latham is likely to win an upper house seat at the state election in a fortnight. In return, Hanson gets to harness the former Labor opposition leader's undeniable campaigning skills, undoubtedly useful in the run-up to this year's federal election. But will this political version of Married at First Sight last past the honeymoon? Pauline, Mark watches Married at First Sight. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never heard Everyone of it. Everyone does. I, no, I don't. Oh. I've you, never Paul watched it. Pauline very hard. And that's what we're looking at. <laughs> Liz, this is our commitment ceremony. <laughs> and we're both in for the long haul. Hi. <laughs> who would have thought it? Okay, where do you want me, Pauline? You're I'm in the driving. front. You're driving, okay. <laughs> Let's get this straight. <laughs> Has there ever been a political odd couple quite like Pauline Hanson and Mark Latham? Stepping out as Mr and Mrs One Nation amidst the adoring crowds at Tamworth's Country Music Festival in New South Wales. <laughs> And loving it up for the local media. Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> See, that's team teamwork. They've both ridden roughshod across the political landscape. <laughs> They've each tried to buck the system. Oh. <laughs> You're kidding. And often the system has bucked them off. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps it's not surprising that the bruiser from New South Wales saddled up with Queensland's fiery redhead. <laughs> Pauline says you're a male version of her. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's a nice thing to say. Everyone's uh, different, of course. Um, in personality, in character, dedication, yeah. um, won't take a backward step, has an opinion, strongly opinionated. Yeah. Comfortable with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know that uh, the view is that you two cannot last. <laughs> well, you know, what I find curious uh, is the focus on us? I suppose there is because we're because we're we're outspoken. We we, we try to tr speak the truth and we say things that the lefties in particular don't like, and and we cop all the outrage. The others because uh, they see us as a yeah. threat, Mark. That's what it is. They see us as, as a threat, and it's all wishful thinking that they want to see us not work together, and, and it will sort of finish. Hi, Pauline. Oh, hello, Mark. Nice to meet you. Yes. Very nice indeed. Years. So, the yeah, first hint of a political relationship was nine years ago. I've always thought the role of the reporter was to ask the questions on the spot. When Mark but Latham signed up as a reporter for a 60-minute story on the 2010 federal election and interviewed Pauline. So do you see Gillard as a backstabber? I don't like her and I don't trust her. And at the end of it... Uh, she cheekily suggests that I should be in One Nation. Well, now I am and here we are. I, well, I said to you, I said, Mark, you sound like One Nation. Why don't you come on board? And, of course, at that <laughs> a time, shock horror. that was not on your mind. Well, 60 Minutes never rang it again. I never got another assignment. So. Is it our fault? <laughs> if a week's a long time in politics, try a couple of decades. Back in the early 2000s, Latham was the Labor Party's great hope. I want to put uh, the rung of a good Medicare system back into the ladder of opportunity. And Pauline Hanson was regarded by many, including Mark Latham, as a political redneck. We are in danger of being swamped by Asians. Can I just 
remind you of something you wrote about Pauline. You said the handsome persona is a perfect match for the One Nation constituency, resentful, distrustful and overwhelmingly negative. Do you stand by any of that? Well, that's the sort of thing you'd expect from a Labor Party politician at the time fighting another political. I know, yeah, well, but but uh, you know, politics has changed fundamentally since so you, then, and that, and that in terms of Labor Party criticism that, of Pauline that is was incredibly mild. But year two thousand, you're yeah. talking about eighteen years ago. Sure. So what's changed? Is it Pauline that's changed, or is it you? Well, I think we all change as people in public life, but overwhelmingly, the biggest change has been in the political landscape itself. You know, um, uh, I, I got involved in politics, so I thought democracy was a fine thing because you could say what you wanted, articulate your opinion and have a debate about policy issues. Today, you want to debate those issues, they just try and howl you down with racist, xenophobe, uh, misogynist, homophobe, Islamophobe, they've got say, all these phobes. Pauline couldn't have said it better herself. Mark Latham is now One Nation's New South Wales leader and will contest a seat in the upper house in the state election later this month. Pauline says she saw his potential way back when she was first elected in 1996. I always imagined Mark to be a future Prime Minister. Even back then? Even back then. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Latham was in with a fair chance of becoming Prime Minister when up against John Howard in the 2004 federal election. Good, good, how are you? That is, until this infamous handshake, which turned his image from potential PM to public bully. Very well, good. Good to see you. That handshake, when you shook Mark's hand, no concerns? <laughs> I think... He's got, a, he's got a good, firm handshake, which I like, <laughs> and the fact is that I trust people on the handshake. Do you think about that? that no, handshake? no, not at all. No regrets I, I, well, about I, that? Well, I'm bemused at some of the coverage. You think I chopped the bloke's head off or something. You well, know, it was the way quite that, a moment. Uh, the well, for the media and, and No, the it was quite a moment for you too, I think. So do you ever regret some of the things you've done? Well, everyone's got regrets in life, of course. Of course, you wouldn't be human if you think... Do you regret that? If you, if you think... No, not in the circumstances. Um, no, I, I've made other errors as opposition leader, but uh, I, don't, I don't think that's top of the list. Both Hanson and Latham have reputations for attracting trouble. Oh, listen here. What are you doing? Only a few weeks ago, Hanson's chief of staff, James Ashby, was caught in this dust-up inside Parliament House with her former colleague, Senator Brian Burston. Bystanders snapped Pauline Hanson's Chief of Staff, James Ashby, clashing with One Nation turncoat, Brian Burston, and his wife, Roz. It's unbelievable. And Latham has a history of involvement in angry confrontations. Well, the party that built you, you, the party that made you. One of the more famous was in 2001, when he broke a taxi driver's arm in a dispute over the fare. All I feel is two hands, one here and one here on my mouth. And my, when my lip was bleeding. I was a victim of a theft and I have no regrets about the action that I took. I guess that's what's feeding into a perception about you, is that you are this angry man, that you are <laughs> vengeful, that you are difficult and, and prickly and uh, capable of uh, being very much aggressive. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm outspoken. Um, I've never attacked anyone uh, physically, uh, other than um, in a circumstance notoriously with the taxi driver who stole my say. property. It wasn't an attack. It was a tackle to recover my property as I was legally entitled to do. So the media carry on about these things, but isn't it sad that their focus is on the skirmish instead of the policy But you debate. create these skirmishes. Are you deliberately controversial? Well, I suppose I do take the view that I'm not a punching bag for people. Pauline, you're comfortable with all this? Yes, I am, actually. I really am. There's nothing you're, you've heard Mark say you know or what? Sit, do that, that has ever made you no, feel uncomfortable? No, it doesn't, because you know what? I have never worn Mark's shoes. And everyone wants to have a go at us because we are prepared to stand up and speak up for ourselves on policy and what's happening in this country. But you try to pull us down for whatever little reason. This is a lot of the media and I'm sick of it. I'm over it. Let the people judge us and they'll have the say at the ballot box. Well, I, I don't mind people standing up for themselves at all. I think yeah. all I'm asking either of you is, uh, or both of you, 
Uh, are you comfortable in the manner that yes, you do I that? Yes, I am. And we and both, you both are. are. Because we're not going to back down just because pressure is put on us by precious, pre a precious few out there that say we've got to um, change our views, not. No, it's not going to happen. Coming up, you said yeah. to me that Mark is very good at articulating his position. That's right, he does articulate. The loving continues. I'll be there advocating One Nation policies until I drop. But could cracks be appearing? So he wasn't necessarily so, on board in the beginning? No, um, he had concerns about it. Latham on the burqa. How did you feel about Pauline's stunt in the parliament? That's next on 60 Minutes. No one saw this coming. It's a road Pauline Hanson's been down before, taking on a new One Nation partner. But there's never been anyone quite like former ALP leader Mark Latham. You're not bothered about the negatives that we've all heard about? Hey, Liz, you know, what he's, about he's broken the odd arm of a taxi driver. Uh, Liz, what about all the negatives they've put out about me? Although I haven't tried to break an arm of a taxi driver. Pauline's so already haven't. found Latham's no pushover, having conceded ground on one of the policies she's most passionate about, banning the burqa. He doesn't believe in banning it completely in communities or on streets and that type of thing, but um, we've sort of spoken about and compromised. So he wasn't necessarily so, on board in the beginning? No, um, he had concerns about it. I respect his opinion. He's out there talking to people as much as what I'm talking to people. And it's about finding the, the balance there. Pauline tells me that you weren't necessarily across the line on banning the burger, is that right? Um, no, it was more the, the practical implementation of it. Well, um, well Pauline's view was wear, that... If they wear it in, the, in their own mosque, if they want to wear it in their own home. Um, Mark didn't believe that was, a, that was a real problem. I, you know, think that to wear the full burqa, the full covering, especially getting your driver's licence or driving a car, it's not feasible. It's, it's unworkable. Where it does impact on society is in banks, in government buildings, in schools, in hospitals, and these type of things. And to prove her point, in 2017, Hanson wore a burqa into the Senate. Senator Hanson. I'm quite happy to remove this because this is not but should belong in this parliament. There was disbelief and there was outrage. To ridicule that community, to drive it into a corner, to mock its religious garments is an appalling thing to do. And I would ask you to reflect on what you have done. Order. How did you feel about Pauline's stunt in the parliament? Well, she was making a point about security. If our society changed and you have someone elected to parliament, they can wear a full burqa in the parliament, how do we know who they are? How do we know? Because our votes are taken on facial recognition. So, you, so, so your son is a stunt. No, well, I'm, the main thing is I Pauline whipped it off point. quickly and that's what everyone should do. I Whip it off quickly and get yeah. rid of it. It is one subject where Latham seemed keen to end the discussion. Hello. And perhaps it's an illustration of what he brings to the One Nation team. She has the star power. Oh, yeah. oh, my <laughs> Especially in the country. Why don't you get in here, Mark? No, no, I'm, uh, I'm taking the photo. He has the political smarts. Tell your parents to vote for us. Good idea. What are the skills that Mark brings to One Nation that you don't have? He's very... Um, the way he expresses policy... Um, um, yeah. You said yeah. to me that Mark uh, is very good at articulating his position and that's not something that you felt was your strong suit. Well, that's right. That's right. He's, um, he does articulate. It's uh, probably better than what I do. Sometimes people have accused me of, we understand what she's trying to say, but if she'd said it in a different way, and I think that's my problem, 
Uh, well, it's not a problem. It comes with the strength of authenticity. But, but you know, everyone tries to improve in a public life, and uh, I, I'm no doubt. I think that, I'm improving well, in the last absolutely, 22 yeah, years, absolutely, especially. Absolutely. But it's not an easy job. Mm. I know my faults. No one needs to tell me about my faults. I'm my worst critic. But I'm out there and I'm trying to do the best possible job that I can. If Mark can actually enhance it, and you know, if I can learn from him along the way and we can work well together, that's what it's about. It's the end result. That's what I want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right now, it would seem neither can do much wrong in the eyes of the other. And so far, this odd couple remains united. If not always by common vision, and by the love they're feeling from a public fed up with politics as usual. Pauline said to me that um, what would deeply hurt her is if you were elected under the One Nation ban and walked away. No, well, that's not going to happen. That's, I'm, I'm committed to what we're standing for, what we're fighting for, and, you know, I, I, I love the state where I've always lived and um, I would respect the people in saying if you voted for me as One Nation, I'll be there advocating One Nation policies until I drop. <laughs> I hope you... Which won't hopefully be in the next five minutes or any Same time soon, I. but, you know, we all get on a bit. We're, we're not the spring chickens we used to be, are we, Pauline? Well, you were younger than what I, I am. I am a little bit, but anyway, don't drop dead on me, you, please. You, I couldn't you, stand you, it. You maintain <laughs> yourself better than I have, so, you know, you've got one advantage. So at this point, well, you are telling me, you're in for the long haul. One of Nation course. is your party. Of course. You're not going to steal it from Pauline. It's not going to become <laughs> Mark Latham's One Nation. And you're not going to bugger off. No, it's not going to become Mark <laughs> Latham's One Nation and I'm not going to bugger off anywhere. If you don't oh, well, get into Parliament... Oh, well, have you wasted your show? <laughs> have you wasted your time? <laughs> well, it's the verdict of democracy. As Churchill famously said, not the perfect system, but miles better than anything else that's ever been devised. So we love democracy and may the people make their decision. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.